Before we watch today's video, um, just a small, teeny little disclaimer. Um, this video is by no means meant to be medical advice. Um, this is literally just me telling a story. A new development in my life is no way meant to be medical advice. If, if you see something similar in this video that's happened in your life, or you know, you know someone with similar symptoms or whatever, uh, then please go see a real doctor. Anyways, on with the video. I recorded an audio of myself and I just wanted to see how bad it really was. And it was fucking terrifying. You just go years without knowing and you're just like slowly killing yourself. It's been a while. New office, hence the terrible audio, but also just new style of content. Cause I think it's time we did a bit of a change. So I have a problem, um, a problem that I sort of denied for a very long time. It is the fact that I snore. I snore very loudly, very powerfully. I mean, I mean, who doesn't snore? I never thought that was a big deal. You know, loads of people snore. Who told you like a chick in your sleep that you just were choking or how'd you figure it out? So what was it like at school when I snored? I didn't think snoring could be that big a deal. You know, there'll be times where I, you know, I'd wake up and I'd be like, you know, sort of felt short of breath. But I thought, you know, but I thought it was just not that big a deal. Well, I would like, it was massages too. Like when I would be getting massages, I would just like wake up and like just need to breathe, you know? My dad was a chronic snorer the majority of his life. Um, and it only took until he retired to go to the trouble of going to a sleep uh, study and then subsequently realizing he had sleep apnea. And um, basically what sleep apnea is, guys, if you don't know, it's when your muscles in your neck and sort of jaw, the whole facial area, they relax so much to the point that the force of gravity causes your, your airway to sort of collapse on itself and just sort of block off the air. Mate, I think you have it. Like, all the characteristics very uh, similar to my dad. And then my dad did it, sleeps 100% better now. And he also, my mum's a lot happier. Um, and then, yeah, so I told Zane and he was like, no, no, put it off for about six years, I'd probably say. Um, and yeah, finally, Pleased to be right for once. I would stop breathing for one to two minutes. Breathe, stop breathing for one to two minutes all night. Yeah. Damn, one to two minutes a long fucking time. Before I got mine addressed, I would just like wake up in the middle of the night, literally on the brink of passing out. And I wore a pulse oximeter to actually diagnose it. And it would show my, I would like dip below 95 so many times to the point where I'm just like killing brain cells all night. <laughs> and 75%. These are two very significant numbers. Significant findings. The sleep study showed that patients stopped breathing totally or partially 36.4 times an hour. Longest cessation of breathing lasted 56.5 seconds. Obstructive apnea. Oxygen saturation, 75%. Uh, Apparently a normal sort of healthy level of oxygen saturation is about 90, 95%. And yeah, mine dropped to 75%. Sleep apnea is pretty prevalent in the sort of bodybuilding, powerlifting, sort of the strength community. But not only that, sleep apnea is like a, a serious thing to, to look out for, like it's not something to be taken lightly. Uh, and the reason why this is bad, I asked the doctor, is that um, it could basically, in the long term, it can lead to heart failure, high blood pressure, kidney failure, um, brain damage, sudden death syndrome. There are two things that you can do. One option is to have surgery, and where you basically try to create more room in the sort of air passageways, like removing the tonsils, um, you know, creating more space in this whole sort of area. But he didn't want to do surgery because he said that surgeries aren't 100% successful. It's really hard to pinpoint the source. 
So we went with the other option, the gold standard, as he said, the most common um, sort of remedy for it. The only problem is that I'm gonna have to use it for the rest of my life. Uh, I, dude, I tried like the thing. It's like, mm. dude, I felt like I had a fucking leaf blower, <laughs> like blowing air into my mouth. Like I just could not sleep, even on the lowest setting. This is a CPAP machine. You know, at first glance, I'm not gonna lie, this sort of freaked me out. It looked pretty scary. It stands for compressed pressure air something. I don't know, I'll put it here. So essentially what this does is that I put it on and there's a hose connected to that little PlayStation 5 thing. And what it does is that it pumps compressed pressurized air into my lungs. So what it does, it keeps the airways open and I'm able to breathe normally. It's called a nasal pillow. So like a little silicone little thingy that goes into my nostrils and it pumps that pressurized air and the water has to be filtered, has to be sterilized. So I have to boil it every single night and let it cool down and then I fill it into the machine. The water humidifies the air. You know, I'm not drying out my sort of nasal air passageway. You can hear the air. You know, you can change the pressure. I like it pretty high because, you know, um, apparently I've got pretty big lung capacity so I can take that higher pressure. Um, but yeah, it's vastly improved my sleep. I do not snore anymore. My girlfriend says I don't snore anymore and I sleep a lot better. I'm not waking up in the middle of the night, um, sort of got, you know, trying to catch my breath. Um, obviously the downside of this is that I have to do this every single night. Um, I have to take this wherever I go. I have to take this onto the plane. I have a little carrying case for the plane. A small price to pay to avoid all those things I listed before. I guess the moral of the story is that, you know, if something's wrong in your life somewhere, just get it checked out as soon as possible. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's just, I know it's completely different, but you know, new year, new me kind of thing. I just, I just wanted to create new, new videos. I wanted to tell stories because I remember, if you remember last year, early last year, I talked about wanting to tell more stories and I just felt like I wasn't doing that. So, you know, I'm inspired by guys like Peter McKinnon, Matty Harpoya, you know, they don't just talk about cameras. They don't just talk about photography, they tell stories. I'm gonna be sharing more personal stories, more stories that just interest me, you know, about people, about the things that I do. I don't watch as much photography content as I used to. I just don't, it just doesn't interest me because I feel like I've seen the same video a million times before. Um, so if I'm feeling like that, I'm sure some of you are feeling like that. Not to say that there isn't going to be photography stuff, there still will be. Um, in fact, coming up this Saturday, I'm going to a photo walk meetup uh, with Leo and a bunch of other guys. Uh, I don't know who's going to be there, so I'm really excited. It's going to be the first of many events, hopefully going forwards. Um, so if you're in the London area, definitely follow London SPC. I mean, I have on good authority that there's going to be some pretty cool photography events. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Follow me on Instagram at Zane Reads Photo. Subscribe so you don't miss a thing. With all that said and done, keep learning, keep shooting. I'll see you all in the next one.